Hey y'all, William did a Pungo Prairie. Time to get the garden planted. But did you know that the governor of California has signed into law legislation to regulate methane gas emissions from cows? Jeez, a poor cow minding his own business, grazing on a hillside 50 miles from the nearest city, can't even break wind in peace without some liberal politician getting their panties all worked up in a knot, wanting to stick their nose in it and levy a tax on it. Mr. Governor, don't you realize that these cows are already doing their part to fight climate change? See this bag? It's full of cow manure. Says so, right here. It's produced by cows, along with that methane gas y'all are so worked up about. And I'm fixing to work it into the soil here as I plant the garden. You know why? Because it's full of nitrogen and other great organic nutrients. It's like power food for plants. All plants. It makes them grow healthy and green when they suck it up in their roots along with water. As they process that nitrogen in their systems, it becomes chlorophyll, which combines with sunlight and CO2 gas from the atmosphere. You know, the same CO2 that y'all climate change warriors are so worried about hanging out there in the first place. And then the plants release oxygen back out into the air so that we can all breathe. So why you want to fret over these cows so much, Mr. Governor? God already has it figured out. Relax. Take a deep breath. Cows produce manure, plants thrive on it and grow, and gobble up CO2 in the process. And you know what else cows produce? They produce beef. And beef is processed into delicious beef brisket. It's like getting a twofer. And I just so happen to have a really great recipe for my world famous Pungo Prairie apricot brandy smoked beef brisket. And I'm gonna show the rest of y'all how to fix it now. So don't go nowhere, cause you don't wanna miss this. Let's take a look at our brisket here. This one's weighing in at about 11 and a half pounds. About three or four pounds lighter than I usually cook, but I'm not cooking up for a big crowd. And I chose it because I really like the way it was proportioned with the size of the point as compared to the flat on this end. The flat was nice and squared off, has good thickness going on to it. So it's gonna cook a little bit more uniformly and I'm just going to trim up some of the fat here. Now, right here on the flat, back here, that's not going to take much trimming because it's already just about a quarter of an inch, as you see. But right here, there's a little that needs to come off. And we're just going to start doing it kind of a little bit at the time until we get the desired thickness of fat cap we want to leave on there. It's a big chunk of fat right in there. We're going to get most of that out of there. Shave it right on down to where we end up with about a quarter of an inch or so. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. We got the trim down to about maybe a quarter inch or so. Got that big old section cut down a little bit there. Got that big old chunk off the point. And the big, big piece that kind of is in here, that big hard fat, we got that out of there. I think that we are ready to season our brisket up with our Pungo Prairie Pit Powder. Now I know a lot of times in Texas, they just use salt and pepper for this, but I'm going on with this rub that we made up, which you can find the recipe at pungoprairie.com. 
nice liberal coating of it there. Flip it over, get the other side. Rub it right into the meat. Now, you want to be sure you season your brisket at least an hour before you're ready to put it on the pit. And you're going to take and use that hour for the meat to come and acclimate up to room temperature before it goes on. Or you could even apply your seasoning the night before, cover it up. It'll even get in that meat a little bit deeper, a little bit more intense. And then be sure you take it out and acclimate it to room temperature for an hour before you put it on your pit the next morning. Okay, got her all seasoned up nice. Now we got a stack of unlit charcoal off to one side of our pit. And another batch that I've got lit off here in this starter chimney. And we'll add these right on top. Kind of get them all stacked over here to one side on top of the unlit ones. And I'm just gonna place this little heat shield here I made out of a piece of step roof lashing. Now the reason we add the lit coals on top of the unlit coals like that, it gives us a longer, more even burn. On go our grates. Final brush down here. And I got these nice chunks of pecan that my good buddy Joe gave me from a tree he was pruning over on the shore that I've had soaking up in some water. And we're gonna add them right on top of our coals here. Give a grace a little Spray down here with this cooking spray and let our pit come up to temperature. We're just going to adjust our airflow back a little bit. Now the temperature at the top of the pit is going to be showing about 325. But over here on the side of the pit where we're actually cooking our brisket, it's going to be 250. Now our pit might fluctuate from 225 to 275, but 250 is where we're aiming to keep it steady as we can. Now there's about a gazillion recipes out there and videos on how to smoke you up a genuine Texas style beef brisket. But here's where the road splits and takes a turn and circles right on back around here to the Pungo Prairie. I got us a bottle of some Simply Peach Juice and a good old bottle of some Joaquin's Apricot Brandy. And we're just going to put about a quarter cup each into this little measuring cup here. I might have went just a little bit extra on the brandy and I put it into this little spray bottle here and notice it's a professional spray bottle because we want it to at least look like we know what we're doing that we are professionals besides this is a multitask bottle great for cleaners pesticides and other liquid hey I think brandy and peach juice classifies as other liquids just fine now our briskets acclimated up to room temperature and our pit's up to where we want it at 250. On the pit, she goes. Fat cap up. A little spray down here with our peach juice and apricot brandy. Maybe one nice more chunk of our pecan right on top for good measure. We're just going to close down the lid and let that pecan smoke start dancing on that brisket. Now here's where we're going to have a little fun. I got a jar of these apricot preserves and I'm going to put about a half a cup of them in this little mixing bowl along with about a quarter cup of our Joaquin's apricot brandy. Give that a little mix with this little whisk here, kind of blend it together. Maybe just a little bit more brandy. <laughs> that ought to do it and I'm going to add in about a half a stick of this melted butter just give it all a nice blend now just so you know I have been adding a little bit of lit lump charcoal in there about every hour or so so we can maintain our 250 degree cooking temperature and each time I've been spraying it down with another good mist in of our peach juice and apricot brandy. And we've done a really good job for these first four hours of keeping our cooking temperature right at 250. Now the reason I didn't film and show you those times where we added that lit lump 
charcoal and those intermittent mistings of our peach juice and apricot brandy. I want it to be in and out of that pit quick to minimize our temperature loss. Now, I've come over here to the gas side of our hybrid grill barbecue pit smoker and I've got one burner over here all the way to the side adjusted down low enough so I can get a temperature in there or a cooking temperature in there of 280 degrees. And now's when we want to check the temperature on our brisket. 165. And that's just about perfect. It's been exactly four hours now that our brisket's been on that pit where we've been maintaining, doing a really good job maintaining 250 degrees. We fluctuated up one time to 275, 280. Didn't stay there very long, down to about 210 for just a few minutes once. But we added them lit coals, got everything stabilized, and now we're ready to crutch it. And we got us a double layer of tin foil here. I'm going to spread just a little bit of our apricot brandy and apricot preserve mixture that we made up right here on the bottom. And then on with our brisket. Like so. Mm, look at that nice bark. Then I'm just going to pour out some of our mixture right on top. We're not going to use all of it. We're just going to spread that on it pretty nice like that, nice and even. Let it drift down the side some. A little bit right on that point. Wrap right on around. Give it a last little spray down here with our peach juice and brandy mixture. Now we're going to just wrap it up nice and tight. And you got us another doubled up piece to go on the top. Just like so. Now we're going right on the gas side. Now remember we got the heat over here. We got the brisket over here. Clothes are right on now. So let me explain to you what I meant by that term crutching it a few minutes ago. The crutch is wrapping that brisket up in that double layer tinfoil to try to keep it from sweating and cooling down in the process. Kind of like on a hot summer day when we sweat to cool our own body temperature down. This way it locks that moisture in there, allows that temperature to rise up to where we want it to be in a shorter period of time without really sacrificing the finished product's quality. And that's why we call it a crutch, because it helps to finish this brisket off in a short period of time. We can do it in eight hours total cook time instead of 18. Now our wrapped up brisket has been on the gas side for three hours and 45 minutes, or a total of seven hours and 45 minutes from when we first went on the pit with it this morning. And we're looking for an internal meat temperature of somewhere around 200 degrees. <laughs> And we are there. Woo. <laughs> and we're just gonna take our brisket here, set it right down there on that board, and let it stay wrapped up in that foil and let it rest for about an hour. Now the reason we didn't use all our sauce that we made up with our apricot brandy and preserves is we got this Woobers Sandwich Pile Horseradish Sauce. And we're just gonna mix it about four to one to our preserves and brandy mixture and blend it all together. And this is gonna give us a really nice sauce with a little mule kick to drizzle over that brisket when we make up those sandwiches. Now the grain of our meat is running kind of like on a bias here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our carving right here across it. We wanna go across the grain. Just like so. That is cutting through like butter. Look at that. Just like going through a stick of butter. Look at that smoke ring we got going right around there. <laughs> This is gonna be good, y'all. Just look at it glistening, how moist and juicy it is. Just put us a 
couple of slices right there on that nice toasted bread a little bit of our nice horseradish sauce we made up with those apricot preserves and that brandy and a little bit of our brisket slaw now that's what I'm talking about dear Lord thank you for all them cows producing precisely what you created them to and especially for this delicious smoked brisket here please bless it now to nourish our bodies and strengthen our spirits for a life in thee through Jesus we pray Amen. Now you know I've been dying to dive into this. Mm. Oh my goodness. I want to tell you something. That brisket is blazing on flavor. That smoke, just the right amount of sweetness from those apricot preserves married in there with that brandy. Nice little crunchy bark going on. So juicy and tender as a mother's love. And that, girls and boys, is what's cooking on the Pungo Prairie. Now that's what I'm talking about.